Good morning. Welcome to Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Pequot Lakes, Minnesota. Thank you for joining us this morning online. Like many churches, we too have um, suspended our in-worship services due to the increasing numbers within our state with COVID and out of respect for our health care workers who, quite frankly, are already overwhelmed, weary, and exhausted. No sense adding to the mix. So, for the time being, we will be doing these services online. And once again, thank you for joining us today. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It is the last Sunday in the liturgical church year. Next Sunday, we will enter into the season of Advent. Everything will be, all of our colors and so forth will be blue. And to, to recognize and to celebrate that day, we have Pastor Nate Lundgren, who is a retired pastor from the area who will be filling in for, a, for me on that Sunday. Today is also, or would have been, or still is kind of our Harvest Sunday. In other words, it's supposed to have a bit of a stewardship emphasis. We'll see how that goes. This is also the Sunday where our women of the ELCA here at Our Saviors will, will be asking you to, or inviting you to turn in a thank offering envelope to help support their ministries. As a part of our worship service, we are also blessing quilts, which you may have noticed around here. Also, we are, we are gonna be including in that some uh, baby care kits. Um, I should mention we have about 50 bless, uh, quilts to bless. We have about 100 uh, baby care kits that Debbie Stiltman has put together. Each one of these, let me see if I can find one. Oh, wow, just happens to be two right here. Each one of these packets has uh, a towel, a washcloth, soap, a blanket, diapers, a hat, and a t-shirt. So, a lot of work, time, and energy went into that, and we are grateful for that. So. We will be lifting all of these things up. I think that suffices for the announcement, so I invite you to join me with the call to worship. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is a great God, a great ruler over heaven and earth, with sincere and repentant hearts. Let us name our sins against Christ and one another. Lord Jesus, judge of the nations, we confess that we have not seen your face among our neighbors in need. We have not shared our food with the hungry. We have not offered clothes to the destitute or shelter to the homeless. We have not welcomed the stranger nor have we visited prisoners. We have not paid attention to these, your sisters and brothers, and in our neglect, we have failed to serve you. Lord, forgive us. Open our eyes to recognize your beloved family and give us the blessing of sincere repentance that we may know the joy of eternal life with you and all the saints in this world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God seeks the lost sheep and feeds them with justice. Forgiven and freed, turn then and, and live in Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of the quilts. Lord God, designer and creator, quilter and weaver and of art out of dubious looking remains of a scrap box, we come to you in celebration and prayer. For we are your patchwork quilt, a host of fabrics, a host of pieces, all brought together, intrinsically or interwoven into a family, your family. Quilted together by the love of God. How great is the love God has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Quilted together by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 Quilted together in faith by the Holy Spirit. For by grace we have been saved through faith. It is not from ourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Every quilt has four basic parts, a backing, padding, a top, and stitching to hold it together. So the master quilt, quilt maker, God, has four parts to the patchwork quilt called the family of God. Just as a quilt has a backing or a foundation, so our patchwork quilt, the family of God, has a foundation. That foundation is Jesus Christ. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 3.11. Every quilt must have padding between the foundation and the outer covering. It is the padding that provides support and warmth in the coldest of times. In the same way, God's word gives us the warmth of love and support that we need at every season of life. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the people of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 16-17. The outer covering is the side with the bright sunny colors. On this covering, there are many fabric shapes many different colors, all arranged in forms, a picture of beauty, like the family of God. But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, every one of them, just as God wanted them to be, 1 Corinthians 12, 18. Stitches hold the quilt together. If stitches in a quilt are not properly sewn, the quilt falls apart. We are assured our quilt, the family of God, is sewn together by the very love of Jesus. In and by ourselves, we find only hatred and strife. But in and through Jesus Christ, we find a love that quilts us together for eternity. For God's love and our love through God is patient, is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always preserves. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Let us pray. Almighty God, designer and creator of the family of God here in this place, bring us back to our foundation in you so that we may hold strong and, and steadfast to you, your will for us. Give us the kindness to support and nourish each other in our daily life. You have given each of us our own distinct pattern and purpose. Help us to let your light shine through us and reflect that beauty within. You have stitched us all together through Jesus' death and resurrection. Help us to keep each other from unraveling. And when we find a loose thread, quilt ourselves to one another again as you bound yourself to us so that we may bring comfort and help to your family. In your name we pray. Amen. Bless these quilts and the hands that have made them. May these quilts serve as tangible reminders of your love and grace to those who find comfort within them. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
A reading from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from their countries. And I will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water course and in all the habited, inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pastures and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between the sheep and, and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Here ends the reading. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew from the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come. You that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. 
I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it, did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Here ends the gospel.
Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. As I mentioned earlier on, today is Christ the King Sunday, the last day in the church calendar, the liturgical calendar. And a year ago, I introduced the idea of an annual Harvest Sunday, a Sunday with the intention of drawing our attention to matters related to stewardship, as well as recognizing and the celebration of Thanksgiving, a national day of giving thanks. With that thought in mind, I had an idea. The idea involved inviting those of you who would normally gather with us on a Sunday morning to bring something to worship, to bring one thing, something that might represent your, your gifts, your talent, your passions, your joys. I'm talking about things like, well, if you're into woodworking, bring a sample of that. You know, maybe if you make baptismal faith chests, we could, you could bring one of those. Or, as you can see this morning, quilts, or prayer shawls, or, or, or a musical instrument of some sort. Uh, maybe it might be something symbolic of your abilities and uh, maybe the ability to teach or to, to sing or to, to organize. It could, be, it could be a hot dish. It could be lessa. Leave the lutefisk at home, okay? <laughs> um, it might be, it might be your, your women of the ELCA thank offering envelope or one of these baby care kits. Do you see where I'm going with this? I was hoping... I was hoping that you might bring something that re represents who you are, your gifts, your passions. And then I had this idea that as a part of our worship service, you would be invited to, to bring that particular item up to, to the altar. And there we would recognize and, and, and bless these tokens of your God-given gifts. That was the plan. And then, as you know, COVID numbers increased. And our church council wisely decided to suspend uh, in-sanctuary worship for the time being and return back to our strictly online worship. And that more or less was the end of that idea. And yet, in some ways, we are still sticking with that theme, but on a slightly different manner. In other words, today, our, our women of the ELCA have invited you to contribute to your thank offering over the course of the next few weeks. On top of that, we have already blessed the quilts and we have recognized the 100 or so baby care kits. So in many ways, today truly is a patchwork quilt kind of Sunday with, with many differing parts and patterns, much like the quilts arrayed in our sanctuary this morning. And I can do nothing more then simply trust that all of this will work out. Let us pray. Lord, open the eyes of our hearts by the power of your spirit, that we may know the hope to which you have, we have been called. In Jesus Christ, amen. Well, this morning I want to share with you three stories, three stories in order to bring some light to today's gospel and other aspects of our morning worship. And the first story is told by the Methodist minister and former dean of the chapel at Duke University, Dr. Will Williman. And according to Williman, <clears throat> one Sunday after church, he and a few others went out for something to eat, one of the local restaurants. It was crowded and the server looked tired and weary. After the meal, after things had maybe thinned out a bit, he asked her, you look tired, are you okay? Well, she told him 
that she had been up most of the night with her little boy who was sick, but yeah, she was okay. And he said, it must be hard after being up all night, having to stand on your feet and work so hard. She simply nodded. At which point he asked the question, so what's the hardest day of the week to work? Now keep in mind, she did not know that he was clergy, okay? And she said, the hardest day of the week is Sunday. I dread all the people who come here after church. They make so many demands, and some of them are so hateful, and they never tip hardly anything. Ouch, that hurts. Now, Williman tells that story in the context of a discussion that might be fruitful to have on this particular Sunday morning. And the question under discussion is, where is Jesus? As I mentioned, it's Christ the King Sunday on the liturgical calendar. And with that in mind, and in light of the parable of the sheep and the goats, it is also a good time to ask the question, where is Jesus? Now, many of our evangelical brothers and sisters will tell you that Jesus is in our hearts, okay? Some devout Roman Catholics and Episcopalians wear or display a crucifix with Jesus' image permanently etched, attached. As Lutherans, along with Roman Catholics and Episcopalian brothers and sisters, as well as some other denominations, we will tell you that Jesus is present in the sacrament of Holy Communion, the bread and the wine. And over the years, I have talked with fellow pastors who will tell you that Jesus is in between the covers of a black leather bound book that they tend to wave around a lot when they preach. Okay? Well, I don't just disagree or with any of these responses. Today's gospel does suggest that there is more to this question, where is Jesus? Yes, Jesus is in Holy Communion, the Eucharist, the Last Supper. Yes, Jesus is found in the Holy Bible. Yes, Jesus is found uh, in our hearts. Um, and yes, some believe that crucifixes and even painted icons carry a sacred image of Jesus. And yet, and yet, I would suggest this morning that none of these places is Jesus' primary residence. So where is Jesus? Well, let's look again at the reading from Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus says, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. All that being said, maybe, maybe Jesus is living on the streets or in a homeless shelter. Maybe Jesus is hanging out at the local uh, soup kitchen or, or standing in line at a local food shelf. Maybe Jesus is at the salvation looking to pick up a coat as the weather gets colder around here. Maybe, maybe Jesus is in the hospital, or more likely, uh, suffering and sitting outside because he cannot afford to go into the hospital. Maybe Jesus is in a refugee camp, in a, in a cage, in a prison. Where is Jesus? Well, today's reading from Matthew makes it very clear that Jesus is often in the places most of us would prefer not to go to. And Jesus makes it even clearer than when he says, 
Most certainly I tell you, insomuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. In other words, wherever people are in need, wherever people suffer, wherever people do without their basic needs, Jesus is there, as should we. And he's not just there to comfort those who suffer. He is suffering right alongside them. That's where Jesus is. Jesus is, is not in, in, in the nave or the, or the sanctuary here, our saviors, sitting patiently waiting for Sunday at 9 a.m. when people would come to visit him for an hour or so, even if we could gather. He doesn't hang out at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., or any of the huge megachurches around our country, or even the Basilica of St. Mary's in, in St. Paul. Jesus is not hanging around hanging out there waiting for visitors. No, if we believe what he said to us in this morning's gospel, instead of any of the wonderful ornate worship sanctuaries that grace our nation, Jesus is more likely to be found at, oh, sharing bread soup kitchen in, in Brainerd. Or, or one of the community meals in either Pine River or, or Bacchus, or in an overcrowded hospital filled with COVID patients and weary um, healthcare professionals. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus isn't present here right now, or, or worse yet, that he won't be with us in a very real and tangible way as we celebrate Holy Communion together. I'm not saying that at all, but what I am saying is that this is not the only place Jesus wants to find us. He wants us out there in the world every day, looking to find him in, in the heartache, the pain, that surrounds us. Church, church is the place where we come to, to feed and, and nourish our souls for, for this work. The work that, that calls us to minister to him in very real and, and tangible ways. Weekly worship, whether or online or, or in-house, in uh, is the support we cannot get along without the strength we need to continue our ministry. Okay, story number two, St. Francis of Assisi. Okay, Francis is probably universally known as a monk and as a saint. He was born into a noble family back in the 12th century in, in Italy. As a young man, he was, he was the worst type of spoiled rich kid. He was a musician, sorry, um, and a party hound, okay? He lived for music, poetry, drinking, and women, and not necessarily in that order. And legend, legend has it that after one of his trips away from home where he could party without his parents nagging him, kind of like college spring break for a lot of folks, Francis was riding his horse toward Assisi when he saw a leper next to the road. And although lepers were every bit as feared and as loathsome in the 12th century as they were back in Jesus' day, for some reason, Francis dismounted and walked over to the leper. He gave the, the man all the money he had in his pocket. And then, extraordinarily, he took the man's hand and kissed it. He put his lips on the leprous flesh. Francis felt at peace for the first time. He hugged the man, 
previously considered to be untouchable and gave him the kiss of peace on his cheek. And the man kissed Francis' cheek in return. Francis then got back on his horse and rode away. And as he turned to look back at the leper, the man was gone. And Francis knew, Francis knew that he had met and ministered to Jesus himself. Although Francis had been struggling for a long time with the feeling that, that Jesus was trying to speak to him, with him, it took the presence of this, this leper to open his eyes to the real Jesus living all around him. And stories like this didn't end with Francis. They continue today. And that leads me to story number three. Current Christian writer Annie Lamott tells about her, her Presbyterian church outside of San Francisco. This is the place uh, where not that long ago Annie had become a Christian. And she says that Ken, Ken had started coming to her church right after his partner died of AIDS. Ken had the disease as well. And Annie Lamont described him as a, an emaciated scarecrow of a man with a lopsided face that lit up when he smiled. Now, Ken told the congregation that when his longtime partner died, Jesus entered into the place in his heart that was broken and that Jesus had never left. Now, over the year that Ken attended the church, he had won almost everyone over. But there was a woman in the choir, Renola, a huge black woman from a southern evangelical background, who had always been taught that Ken's way of life, indeed, Ken himself, was an abomination. To her, Ken was not just suspect, but someone to be avoided. One day, during the hymn singing, the congregation got to its feet, except Ken, who was too frail and weak to stand alone. And they all started singing, his eye is on the sparrow, okay? And, and then when they began to sing, why do I feel discouraged? Why do the shadows fall? Renola began to cry. She left the choir and walked down to Ken. Renola lifted him out of the pew and held him like a small rag doll. The two of them um, sang together, cried together, were children of God together. Now, Annie Lamont says that she doesn't know if this episode constitutes a full-fledged, no-kidding miracle or not, but it's close enough for her. So, here is where I'm going with all this. Jesus is sitting out in the world right now, waiting not for a church service to start, but for human contact, for caring, for compassion, for kindness, for love. The, the kind of love our Lord meant when he told us to love our neighbor. So what does all of this have to do with Harvest Sunday? Everything. Now, had you been able to bring your reminders today, your, your items that represent who you are, now is about the time when I would have invited you to bring them up and place them around the, the altar. These items would have mingled 
with each other, much like we used to mingle with one another prior to COVID. The plan was, as I mentioned, it was to bless them, to bless them all and send them back with you. So as, as you go back out into the world, that world where Jesus lives and suffers as a reminder of who you are and whose you are. But I want to invite you to, to still go out into the world, mask and distant, of course, with these reminders that every aspect of your lives are a blessing and that we are called to share those blessings with other people. We are called to share our blessings with Jesus in our everyday lives. Now, rest assured, I care about your stewardship, about your financial commitments, about your church attendance, even when it means streaming um, of this service uh, and you at home, possibly in, in your pajamas and enjoying uh, a cup of coffee during worship, okay? Um, I also care about your activities here and, and in the community. And don't think for a moment that this odd stewardship emphasis Sunday means that I don't care about, about what goes on in our saviors and, and how involved you are at it. I believe, I have faith that, that reminding you about the need to see Jesus in the world and to respond to the needs of Jesus in the world is also a reminder or an encouragement to you to practice generosity and gratitude in every way you can every day so that Jesus' work can be done by the church as well as by her members. On this Harvest Sunday, I give thanks for all of you, those of you out there sitting on your couches, around the kitchen table. I give thanks for our saviors. I give thanks that Jesus rose from the dead and lives today. And I give thanks that he still needs and still wants us to meet him with everything we say and do and every place we go. Amen.
Just one step I may see, for I know his eye is on the sparrow, and I know sing because I'm happy I sing because I'm free for his eye is on the sparrow and I know watches me he watches me and I know he watches me he watches me and I know God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all who are in need. Eternal Shepherd, we give you thanks that you continually seek us out and guide us back into your flock. Raise up 
faithful leaders among your people. Give them courage to, to speak in your name on behalf of justice for all. Train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O God. God, our sovereign, your rule of justice and mercy is the pattern for all good government in our world. We pray for those in power in all nations, that they might lead by example, make decisions with mercy, and rule with your guidance. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see you, your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the hungry, the naked, the thirsty, and all who appear to be outside your grace, lead us to see your face in all whom we meet, that guided by the example of your Son, Jesus, we may recognize our brothers and sisters within your family of love. Today, we lift in prayer these your children who need your healing touch, Bill and Mitch, Karen and Jill and Debbie, Eric, Joel, David, Annette, and all those we lift up to you silently within our hearts. Use our hands and voices to make known your gracious goodness. Hear us, O God. God of compassion and healing, we give thanks for the hands that have shared their talents to create these quilts that will soon provide warmth and shelter for those struggling day by day. We give thanks for these baby care kits. May they serve their recipients well. Hear us, O oh God. As our nation pauses in this forthcoming, in the forthcoming day of Thanksgiving, keep us mindful that as your children, every day is a day of giving thanks, a day of gratitude, and a day of sharing with one another the bounties of your, of your land, of this land. Instill the spirit within us that, and may our lives reflect your generosity. Hear us, O oh God. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where, we will, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. This morning, as we celebrate the sacrament of communion, preferably by those of you who are at home, if you have had a chance to pick up one of the celebration cups at the appropriate time, I will invite you to take and eat and uh, to, to drink. Um, if you have not picked them up, keep in mind you can stop by the church here anytime to pick up a, a, a few of those. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom in the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
<laughs> Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal you have <coughs> in this simple meal you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Our God calls us to do justice. May you find strength in God's grace. Amen. Christ Jesus calls us to love kindness. May you find comfort in Christ's gentleness. Amen. The Holy Spirit calls us to walk humbly with our triune God. May you always find joy in God's love and justice. Amen. Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.